This is the first in a series of conversations with an international teacher of colour. The idea of these webinars to reach out to international schools, international organisations and international recruitment agencies to talk about how they are making systemic changes with regards to racial equity in their institutions. Um, the first question I wanted to know was um, why is your school committed to making these changes? Well, our school is committed to making the changes is because um, something that um, those of us who started the equity group noticed when we first started was there was a lot of superficial uh, celebration of, of diversity, just um, like food festivals and fabric types of things happening and people making statements like, we love our diverse community. But really when it came to representation, um, equity, especially for brown and black people, there it just really went the opposite way. Um, the celebration of Black Pete on campus with the Dutch community, um, just the, the complete lack of representation um, in curriculum um, and instruction. Um, a, a lot of uh, majority white white teachers in the international setting as well that um, in a monolingual environment that are are bringing even their own um, understandings of identity. Um, and racial awareness to the table when they're working with such diverse population. Um, those are all those things that started adding up for those of us who started uh, the equity team. And um, and really, those of us too that did come from, we, we came from diverse environments where um, racial education, um, professional development around racial equity was was very much a part of our, our professional development as educators and a part of um, very outwardly um, spoken belief systems and the school systems we came from. And so it kind of felt like I, it kind of, when I came abroad for the first time from, from Minneapolis in, in Minnesota in the United States, it really felt like I was going back into 1950s in a lot of ways. Um, it was, it, it surprised me. I wasn't expecting to find that um, amongst such international people. Um, and so that, that's really, I was I was actually shocked um, it coming as somebody who had, had most of my experience in um, in the United States, and um, yeah, so that's what that's what propelled us to start it. Uh, right away when we put the idea out, we had a, a huge group of parents that wanted it on on helping as well. Um, so actually, our first first most successful work was with parents, and we had a parent group called the Internationally Minded Parent Advisory Committee Impact. And um, and we we did the first uh, kickoff of most wonderful equity work uh, with our parent group. Um, so that was, and then that propelled us into um, having a lot of confidence and buy-in from our, our larger school community to really start working with staff. Cool. Wow. When did you start this? Um, we I've been at the school for this is my sixth year there, and we started three years ago okay. with our equity committees. And you call this a committee, what does that mean? Because you know you have committees, groups, councils and so forth. How much, I mean I'm going to use the word power, how much power do you have to, to uh, make these changes? We have, um, I should say we're a team. Uh, we do have quite a bit of buy-in um, with, I'm an administrator on the team and so um, right from the start we've, we've re received re support and buy-in. Uh, for example, um, we we made a call to start implementing equity into the curriculum, and we have buy-in to do that. We've um, so that's what we're doing. So our equity team this year, we we wanted to make an impact on every single team. So we have a representative from every single team on our school now, and we're meeting every other week. And we're um, we have two goals. One of them is to is to develop racial awareness amongst the, our teaching staff, and their second goal is to um, implement culturally responsive curriculum into all of our curriculum. Um, and so amongst that right now, we're able to be successful in the implementation because we have a representative from every team. And we're also an IB school. So, so for PYP, that means we have common planning time for teams every, at, well, twice, once every four days. And so the equity person is sitting on the, um, sitting on the team and their job is to have that, that equity lens for everything that happens in that unit development. Um, and so when we, when we do those things, we've had broad buy-in from, from the administrators we're working with. Um, we have 
Last summer, now we expanded the group to the upper school as well. We have a buy-in from the administrator over there. They have they wanted to operate as their own satellite. They're they're more beginning than we are, but they're they're working successfully with it. Um, and then buy-in came from the head of school because they they supported an initiative. We actually did a. I'm not sure sure if you're familiar with Darnell Fine. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of the equity work, you know, internationally. Um, they he was going to come for four days and just do some wonderful professional development with our parents, with with us, with our equity team. Um, we had we had a lovely four days set for, for work with him, but you know, COVID happened, so we had to cancel it all. Um, but they were they were going to support four days for him um, to come, and we'll have to. And they said that that we could still consider um, this year over over Zoom or over Teams or something to get him back. So they are still committed to doing that. Um, but they've been very supportive. The, wow. the the broader school has been. That sounds amazing. Uh, but it sounds like you started in the elementary school first, then, and yeah. you're pushing this through the school. Um, and so you have. I'm assuming you have two parts, your elementary school and then like an upper school or something like that, where, the, like you yeah. said, last summer the upper school is, um, they're starting their journey now, is that correct? Yes. And you yes, started so this three years ago, and can I ask why they didn't start as well at the same time? Um, I think I think a lot of people just needed to see it happening. Um, it was almost a taboo subject at first. Uh, it made some people angry. Um, which is, of course, to be expected. Um, but when we first brought it up, this was actually we, the spring of 2000, the 2018-2019 school year. Yes, that's when we kicked it off, and we, we started with staff surveys. What do you need? What do you understand? Um, and, yes, we had some outright like anger expressed in the surveys. Um, so, um, but of course, if it's your belief, this is what you push forward through, and that's what we did. And then all of a sudden, it just like it's like became acceptable or something. I think just through people starting to talk about it, about racial equity. We're talking about racial equity right now, and what does that mean? And and then just putting it on the table, it's just things started to gradually change um, through that just open conversation. And did you and, when you got um, negativity from people? Was that because they felt as if um, you were making them feel like they were doing something wrong, or was it because they just didn't agree with what you were saying? I, I think it could have been a, a number of things. I think um, some people thought it was wrong to to talk about to talk about race um, and power and representation. Um, that's what I understand was the reason, even though I don't fully understand the full the full thinking. Because they were, it was kind of like um, conversations in the shadows about it, not not up and open. And so, but then when we did a survey, because um, one of our equity team leaders was was very big about the buy-in and giving people a private voice. And so we did a second survey. We had everybody in support of it on our lower school staff. Um, so what we did is um, last summer to expand it, um, it. We all we all couldn't leave China over the summer, so I just said, okay, everybody, we're gonna do we're gonna do. Um, Thursday brunches, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss um, how to be an anti-racist by by Ibram um, Kendi, and who wants to be a part of it? It's gonna be it's gonna be work, and it's gonna be conversations. It's gonna be structured, um, and then we had like we had 38 people sign up, and there were people from our ECE campus, from our upper school, and then we just we just came we met together, and we had actually had an online team as well for people who wanted to meet online because we had teachers stuck out of the country. We had 38 people meeting every Thursday over the summer, um, and then now it's just like this open conversation. So then the upper school then had a lot of, um, I guess they just had a lot of, of development, a lot of interest, a lot of engagement in order to start their own group, which is what they did. Um, ECE didn't. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get anyone because we needed a pioneer. We needed somebody to want to lead lead the group at the ECE. That's the is they're also another campus, and no one signed up to do that. But um, we'll, we'll we'll try again in a little bit because we did have a lot of ECE participants in our in our summer group. Um, yeah, so it's been pretty successful um, so far. And so. Um um, some of this sort of leads into my next question. You you seem to have actively involved um, your whole staff body. Uh, how have you involved your student body? And we'll yeah. start with that oh. first. Yeah, student body. 
Yeah. With our with our parent initiatives, and I'm mixing my years up. That was our impact was was very big. I think that was two years ago. Yes, um, we were we made them um, children's events. And so the children would come and then we openly led conversations with the parents and students around um, the racial equity and the equity pieces. And so that was how we involved children through parents um, two years ago. Now, um, we started last year. It was a half a year for us mostly uh, because of school closure. And then we opened back up again, but we didn't meet until the summer. Um, when we started again, we were very much focused on developing ourselves and uh, organizing to hire um, Darnell in to do professional development um, and then to lead forward. We wanted to lead forward with D Darnell um, in implementing curriculum. Um, however, when when all that got canceled in the beginning of this year, we said, well, we can't we can't wait around for, for somebody else to come and do this work. We have to do this work. Um, and so, and Darnell had get, given us a lot of tips. So he did, he gave us the tip to do that, um, the Teaching Talent Social Justice Standards. Um, I think they, they changed their name now to um, um, Teaching for Justice, yes. which is a much better name. Yeah. But yeah, we're using those their standards. Um, so we implemented, so with our equity team, they, they implemented the, the identity strand in our first unit, in our first Who We Are unit with all the students. And so all the students we have started talking about their identities and belonging to different identities, identities that, that um, have to do with skin color and, and your culture and things like that. And, um, and so the, we had the kids in that first unit for the first time openly talking about belonging in multiple identities and things like that. And, and so we were, we were all very happy with that. Um, of course, for the International Day, we did, um, we centered it around um, color and just that your identities as well. And so that's what the students wrote their student, their speeches on, is bringing their culture to the international table and what does that mean. And we had our some of our lower school students did their speeches on um, Asian discrimination um, on a global scale because of COVID um, mm. and, and um, prejudice and bias because of COVID and being associated with Asians and things. And so I, I was really proud of our elementary kids bringing that to the UN um, speech table. Um, so now our project is implementing in, in every unit, the, and we're using the social justice standards as, as our tool. Um, and actually what gives us some more credibility in the IB world and with our teachers is uh, the International and Baccalaureate um, in, um, International Mindedness statements that they're beefing up with the enhancements. Um, they're actually very... They, they're very nice, but they're, they, they seem kind of lofty and broad, and, and they're not as categorized as nicely as we feel like the social justice standards are. And so, but we are going to, we are working to align them. And then um, we're working on our next project that we voted on to make it very tangible for teachers is to create can do statements with the social justice standards. And we are talking about representing them on like a, a, a tangible poster. That we would that the equity person would bring to every um, planning table, and then we'd always have this frame of these I can statements for for just to, to directly hopefully go into being learning intentions and lessons to make it very easy for teachers to just see how this quickly relates to um, whatever unit they're doing, whatever activity they're doing. Um, for example, the third the third grade is their um, inventors unit is coming up. Inventors and innovators unit is coming up. Um, we want them to be able to sit with their can-do statements and see, um, because representation is typically something that is very underrepresented um, in that unit. And they will, they do a living museum, and then we have all of our students dressed up like old white men, <laughs> like mm -hmm. on the living museum. And it's just like, oh, this is so wrong on so many <laughs> levels. And what about the parents in our community? And what about our heroes in our own community? And what about, you know, like there's such rich, diverse conversations that can just bring out so much um, more meaningful and authentic production from the students just by exploring um, some of these questions through the lens of the social justice standards. And so that's, that's what our project is that we're working on right now. Um, so we're really excited to see what, what the kids um, will come back with. Of course, the members of our equity team, they actually have the most evidence of kids producing very um, very advanced understandings of race and equity because, because of course, it's, it's throughout their whole days as, as passionate equity educators. Um, but our goal is really to help other empower our other teachers to do that. Um, an area for growth for, for us right now definitely, definitely is, is we know that there's professional development 
uh, for our staff involved in, in understanding um, the complexity and understanding racial awareness and understanding um, equity and racism and um, and and we that that's our definite area for growth right now. Yeah, I was going to ask. I mean, involvement of all of your staff um, was that hard, or um, has it been a slow process to sort of get everybody on board and? Um, for everybody to feel comfortable and confident to sort of go into the classroom and have those conversations and, and have the knowledge and also uh, the understanding of how to sort of navigate um, curriculum and conversations and where to look for resources and, and so forth. Um, has that been easy or was it Absolutely been not. No, yeah. I would say that that's not easy at all. Um, but part of our message has just been that, that this, is, this is challenging. These are courageous conversations. We, we use Glenn Singleton's work as well in our work. Are you familiar with Glenn Singleton's work? I've heard the of courageous the name. conversations. Sorry? Courageous conversations. Yeah, I've heard of a name, but I haven't um, delved into that. Yeah, it's very popular in the United States. The, the, the Glenn Singleton and his team does a lot of professional development in U.S. schools um, for educators. Um, and and it's, it's very rich, deep... Um, deep professional development and so yes that that is definitely what what we need to do do more of that we're working on uh here in the uk what we found is we were trying to reach out there into the world and get resources out there but it, it seems easier for us to relate to a lot of the staff that we have um and try and link things to the uk as well as what's out there um, because it's quite different um, what's going on in the U.S. and the, and the U.S. Um, systems and the things that are happening in schools uh, to make changes compared to what's happening in the U.K. Um, and we're trying to sort of bring those two worlds together so that we've got the resources from out there, but we've, we're also trying to make those connections here. Um, and I know, you know, we have a very diverse faculty, but... Um, we also have quite a lot of English people um, at the school as well, and so they are trying to find. I think a lot of them are finding it hard to make those connections. They're asking why we're we doing this. It's, it's happening over there, but they don't quite realise that this is also happening in the UK as well, and and you know Europe and and so forth. And so it's trying to sort of get that understanding across. And it's a difficult path at the moment because it's nothing. Our school has never done anything like this, and. And what I'm also trying to do is um, uh, we have three campuses here in the UK. And so we actually started a council last summer across the three campuses. Um, and so we're trying to do work across the three campuses and trying to sort of bring that up. So it's sort of a bit of a big project rather than focusing on one school. I'm using my school to do a lot of the work, but then trying to bring the others up as well. And so we're sort of all... And then we meet every month to um, try to sort of get more people on board, um, try and uh, take things step by step and so forth. Um, I was going to ask, um, you've created your goals. You mentioned that you created some goals. When you created those goals, how inclusive were you of your um, staff and your community? Or was it just a, a few people that were, um, you know, involved? You know, th th those who are part of your um, your um, team. It was just a few people. It was. Um, we would. It would be a good idea when we bring it out further with uh, professional development for our full staff to look at our goals again. I think definitely with more people. But but both times we did our goals with parents, it was with the parents and with our equity team, most of their equity team um, doing the goals. We did, um, yeah, it was done in a very collaborative process, but still just with the equity team. And how many people did that involve, would you say? It was, um, we reestablished it this year, so it is, our, our larger one is, about 12, about 12 people now. We actually have two factions within our lower school division of, of it. We gave our, um, we have a, the action equity team that is doing more work, meeting more often, and then we have our, our larger one that, that's helping us implement the work. Um, but we have, um, 
the upper school, we gave our upper school our goals, and then um, I'd have to check and see what they did because they wanted to refine them and use them themselves, but I, I do believe they've developed their own. We haven't connected in, in over two months, and so I need oh. to see where they're at, but <laughs> we did, as an equity team, develop them. Okay. And um, I, will you be sharing those to get feedback, to, to um, make amendments if you get feedback from the wider community, or, or how... How many people are you going to sort of share that with to get feedback afterwards? Um, I think that that it would be, I mean, this is definitely a good question and it's something that, that we would like to do. Um, everything in our school is, is things that we like to collaboratively share and get open feedback on, so it's one of the more areas to do that. When we're, if we're able to get Darnell fine back, for example, or able to, to do some of those, again, still this year, that, that's a good time for us to do that with the broader community. Okay, yeah. I mean, we are in the process at the moment of putting a, a vision, a um, pathway, goals, or, or whatever you want to call it, because we haven't quite come to uh, naming it yet. We've had we had a um, a workshop at, in January. Um, mm -hmm. We all are also working with a DEI. Um, expert but she's predominantly worked with the corporate world sort of thing so she's sort of talked about frameworks um, uh, and initiatives and how we can sort of get those things going and so we've actually started working on um, our vision um, but we're also working on networks as well within the council and to try and spread those um, and so we have currently formed a, a racial equity um, network, a religion and beliefs network, a um, gender equality network and a disability network and so our idea is then to sort of have these groups or networks, have some discussions, find resources and sort of be the, the go-to people eventually for teachers and, and staff so that they, if they have um, questions about something they might want to implement in their units they could say, hey, let's let's go to that group. Maybe they've got someone who we can speak to. They can link and, and so forth. We're, we're at a very early stage in our school. We're trying to do a lot, I think, a little bit too quickly sometimes. Um, but in our council, we have, um, I think, 42 people across the... Oh, 42. Three That's but this is number. across three schools right now. Um, and it, it's growing. It's just sort of growing very slowly. Um, but what we... What the school wanted to do was to try and have our um, council um, lead from the bottom. So whoever wanted to get involved. The administration didn't purposely. Um, and they didn't want to lead it. They didn't want to um, have that influence because part of the reason they knew that uh, they're, they're all white and um, they realised that if they came and stepped in and took a top-down approach... It wouldn't look good because that's they know that's what's been happening in the past and that's a feedback that they've got so they've sort of let this grow from the bottom um, and I've been working with the HR manager across the three schools um, to sort of get that influence across and so that's 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 been our approach it's been an interesting one um, but you know it sounds like you guys are really really far ahead um, and you're actually implementing some of these things and you're actually taking actions. There are some actions that we've done. We've started to um, use advisory lessons. Uh, I think we're quite far behind implementing things in the um, curriculum. Um, my wife's actually the PYP coordinator and she um, she's trying to influence that side of, of things really, but it's a slow process because I think we don't quite understand why this needs to happen because mm -hmm. <clears throat> they feel there already is they're stuck on the diversity bit where mm -hmm. we have diversity people are diverse what's the problem why are we doing this and so it's, it's getting past that bit and having those conversations and I think what we're trying to do is engage more staff and having these so we started with a um, whole school just in Egham campus, a uh, whole school um, Zoom, where we then broke into breakout rooms, and I asked um, 
members of the council to facilitate these rooms and just talk about diversity and what people thought about it. And so that was our path, and we're going to sort of con continue to do that. Um, talk about inclusion, talk about equity, talk about anti-racism, and bring people in so that they have a voice, but in a smaller room. Because I think we sort of found at the beginning, when we try to do things and everyone's included, everyone stays quiet because they're scared of saying the wrong thing or they don't know what to say. But I think our school schools now know this is happening and mm -hmm. they need to sort of be involved. <laughs> yeah. And that's a that's a difficult thing, but it you know, I think it's gonna happen. Did uh, you go through your vision with that whole Zoom group with the school? Are you going through your vision and your goals with that group and getting feedback? Or how yeah, are you going about getting Exactly. So it's the same thing. We're doing the same as you. And so we have our um, 42 member group. We had a discussion mm -hmm. about, we had um, a consultant come in and talk about a vision and how we can sort of put things together. And everybody was part of that conversation in the DEI council. And then we asked who would like to form a committee so we can focus on a framework. And then we took a lot of frameworks from different uh, organisations, universities and schools. And we have started to sort of put things together um, according to what we had before, but also based on some other sort of um, information we've got. And so our smaller group, our, um, our communications group we're calling it now, um, there are about, I think, eight of us, something like this. And so we're then, we've just sort of taken a couple of weeks now to go over this. We're now going to come back to the larger um, DEI council next week, talk about this. And then our, our aim also is then to uh, bring, put it out to the, the, all the three schools then very soon after that to get some wider feedback um, so that we can... Number one, get some feedback. Number two, make everybody aware of what we're doing. And, and um, so they're also aware, okay, these are the things that are happening. Rather than my worry is keeping it up here somewhere and it's just sort of floating around and people know something's happening, but they don't quite know. We're trying to sort of be as transparent as we can. And I think that's really important. Um, not just with our discussions, but with just any anything we're doing. And, and so... I'm not sure, you know, one of the things, um, we've talked a bit about consultants and things, one of the things that um, I'm wondering is how do you, um, how, how transparent are you and how do you get your information out to people so they know what's going on also and so that they feel, okay, this is where I can be involved as well. How do I get involved, you know? Um, we're primarily doing it right now through... Um if it's if it's like for a UN day, it was just what we told told the whole staff like in a meeting and then through emails and then for example our first unit of the year, um, it, we did a presentation on it, have some PD on it, um, and for the whole staff um, on what it was going to look like, which standards we we're going to use and focus on, and and so that was very visible. And then late, so when it's not those two times of the year so far, it's been through the equity team members at the team tables during the team meetings. And so um, that's just the, the, there's actually a lot of um, just encouragement that, that happens within our group for that too, because some people are passionate about it, but they feel like, oh, there's, there's not enough time it, and we're always so rushed. And so now I feel like I'm taking time if I'm bringing them, this up. And so it just goes back. We, we do a lot of like rah-rah cheerleading with each other, just of, but how important is this? How, um, what can we do to make it easier for, for teachers? What more support could we do for teachers? Like, so we have a very um, vulnerable and, and open uh, equity team where, where we're always just, we know part of it supporting each other to make sure that we're doing each of our roles to get it into the small group meetings. And um, that time too, we're also trusting that when teachers have a problem or teachers are uncomfortable with something, that they're gonna bring it up with their close small team and then our equity team can bring that back and then we can have those smaller feedback loops happening. Um, so that's currently how we're getting it out right now, information and work out. And you said that you have um, a equity team member in each grade level. Was that correct? How did you manage each, to do that? Uh, Sorry? 
because it's uh, yeah, the, it's a structure I will bring with and advocate for as an educator for as long as I can now. Um, we set up our whole structures this way as a school this year. And so each team, the tech team, the math team, the literacy team, the equity team, um, the culture team, the culture and equity work very closely together. Um, we, we all just have, okay, we're going to limit our teams just to make sure that every single team can have one representative from each grade level and um, each team. So the Mandarin team, the, the single subjects team, the support team as well. Um, so that's how we did it. Wow. Uh, and people we were willing to, to, to take that role on? Yes, definitely. Our, our culture equity team is the is the largest one. Is so there's a there's a huge interest in in helping with with it. So um, another question I want to ask: um, How do you um, when you're bringing in the wider community and you want to um, show what you're doing as a school? How are you managing to do that um, <clears throat> and make people aware without crossing boundaries? Um, I guess we're just, I think, well, when we had impact running, our parent group, um, now we're not allowed to have parents on campus. So we completely, right. impact is on pause this year. Um, and because of our, 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 we had these amazing parents running it and leading it, and then they, they both moved on to other countries. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, um, we just are kind of putting impact on pause this year. Um, and it was really through them that we felt um, empowered that because they were just so many um, parents out in the community from so many different cu cultures and countries um, saying this and, and inviting parents in WeChat groups. And in, 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 where did you live in China, by the way? Beijing. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's parents being um, the voices for it is great because just like you said about teachers, things being important to come from the ground up for teachers, um, it's very much important for us to, and the parent community, for to come from other parents too. Um, and I know in me as an admin too, I've been very self-conscious of it. Actually, my, the, I'm a vice principal. The, the principal is very concerned that I'm going to look like I'm, I'm like leading the team or something. I'm not, and I try very hard to not <laughs> as well myself. And so, like, I, I'm, I'm not supposed to be 100% anymore. <laughs> um, anyways, um, and so when we hired Darnell Fine, we really got our, our impact parents from last year um, to really help us get the message out. And we had a flyer that, I mean, the flyer for Darnell Fine for the parent session was, uh, it's, it's not too young to talk about race or it's never too young to talk about race. And it was just a big, bold letters, picture of smiling Darnell, um, like a, a beautiful flyer that was going out all over the WeChat groups. And I was just kind of holding my breath going, are we going to get some parents that are upset about this, about like skin color and race being talked about in such an open way? Um, and we didn't, not a word. Okay. Why? Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. I don't know. Um, we had we had uh, Chinese parents, um, we had Taiwanese and Hong Kong parents. Uh, we have a very international school, um, a very diverse com a community, and we didn't get a single parent that questioned us about having a having a workshop for parents about race and how they can talk to their kids about it. Um, That's really yeah, interesting. We did, all, we did all of our all of our impact stuff went out in full community news, and uh, we had booths at the international food fairs, and we had. We were very open about our mission. It was very culture and equity and, and, and you know, racial equity driven. And we we didn't have parents giving us any pushback, at least not to us. Yeah, and maybe that's because it's your community or or changes are happening in, in the country as a whole. Because, you know, I would assume that some schools in China would be scared to do something like this because of the country you live in and so forth and because of certain restrictions. But, um, you know, it does seem that there are changes happening, which hopefully is positive. I think so anyway. Does it, does it yeah. seem like that to you, is in it, um, you know, living in, in uh, Shanghai, living in China? I know Shanghai is a little bit different to Beijing, I think. Yes, I guess it's, I mean, I've, I've lived here for six years now uh, with my family. Um, do I think things are changing? I guess I, I live in such an international community, I can't really say. I just, I feel like on the surface level that, that um, Shanghainese people and Chinese people tend to be very um, welcoming and accommodating. 
Um, but that doesn't necessarily know. I, I understand what the deeper thinking is. Um, and, and too, like the impact parents who are Chinese or weren't, are less international Chinese, we're always less, less vocal at our impact meetings even. Um, more parents that we like encouraged or like dragged arms onto our committee for because we wanted representation, of course, from Chinese parents. Um, but we did have, interesting, we have, I think, parents starting to think about it for the first time. One of our um, Korean moms, came um, up to me and, and wanted to talk about how her daughter uh, is darker skinned Korean and was self-conscious of that. And she said, she had made a comment of, I don't think I would have ever said anything. I think I would have brushed it under the brush before um, being seeing what Impact is doing. And she made a comment, something to being empowered by just the open conversation about race, being feeling more confident to talk to her darker skinned Korean daughter about it. Um, when, when she was confronted with that, um, perhaps this Asian whiteness standard um, or lightness standard. Um, so I, I, I know that was an example of an anecdotal situation where a parent was talking more openly about um, feeling grateful that they had some type of school or culture um, um, acceptance around the, around the conversation perhaps. But I, I don't know if I could ar articulate. When we first brought up... Um, taking Black Pete off campus the first year I was here. Uh, I came home up, there's, I, I got pictures on my WeChat of, of um, Black Pete visiting my son's classroom. Oh my gosh. And I was like, I was horrified. I, I guess a parent said, this is absolutely not, this is, and um, so I brought it, um, when I brought it to the principal at the time, he's like, that you, you cannot go and talk about a cultural tradition and and demand that it's taken away, and like there was, and that I was like, we were really, I was really afraid of, of some, yeah, feedback from the Dutch community that we we're trying to erase their culture or something. Um, but we did have the, the UN speech. I think sometimes when the United Nations does have some statements that they make, they can really empower schools like ours. Because that's what I took and I went to uh, the head of school with. Um, is the UN statement, and she she was in full agreement, and and then it end, just ended. She just ended it just like that, and, the, and nobody pushed back. I don't wow. know why, but nobody pushed back from the Dutch community. Um, maybe because it's it's um, a controversy in the Netherlands as well. I'm it not is, sure. Yeah. I think even um, there's been more pushback this year and, um, because of it. I remember bringing it up with my school at the time and sort of talking about it, and a lot of people were unaware of um, it even still continuing and so um, yeah I, I mean I'm assuming you found difficult conversations with the when you first started this with your head of school and so forth but um, you know these things need to happen <laughs> yeah. that's what yeah. I, I, that's what I totally believe um, it's been nearly an hour um, I don't want to keep you any longer um, I, I really thank you for um, you know spending this time and helping uh, with this pathway. Um, we're not just looking at uh, racial equity, we're looking at everything um, as a school. I'm trying to focus on racial equity in particular, um, in some aspects we're looking right across the school and um, because we're looking at LGBTQ+, we're looking at gender equality um, and things like that, when we bring Doha into the conversation they need to sort of um, well, they need to sort of dissect what we're doing and think what can they bring back to their community and their parent body and the country, really, because I think there are certain laws there which um, might get them in trouble, and so they have to okay. be a little bit careful. And so mm -hmm. their head of their head of school is going to join our council. Um, he's coming to our next meeting next week, and hopefully he can take. He's very interested. I think he's just a little bit worried about. It. If we're saying this whole thing as, a, as an organization, he's worried about taking that whole thing back to Doha and saying, right, we're going to do this as well, because mm -hmm. I think he knows he can't do everything. So, for example, this, yeah. this month in um, <clears throat> the high school, we're, we're focusing on um, LGBTQ+, um, and next month we're looking at gender equality. Um, as well, but we're also going to be bringing in. Um, I, I'm also always going to put a lens on uh, racial equity in those um, groups as well, so that mm -hmm. people can become aware. <clears throat> yeah, definitely.
Yeah, it sounds like you guys are doing a lot of great work. Um, yeah, I'd be interested in following what you're doing too because I know I've got a lot of good ideas already here too or even different things that, that little holes that we should be firming up as well with our current work. Um, yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot of a lot of people who are really interested. We've got a lot of people who are interested but scared. <clears throat> um, and I think this is when we bring people in to um, help us, we just need to bring the right people in. We just need to make those connections and make make sure that our school are doing what's right for our schools in a way, in our situations. And each school's slightly different, but <clears throat> we all sort of have the same structure, types of children, and, and so forth. Um, our curriculums are different um, because we're we're a full IB school, um, and so that's another I think another avenue to sort of. Uh, approach especially in MYP and DP um, there are certain things which you can do uh, but it's difficult and, and the main thing is to get everybody on board to make those changes otherwise if it's just happening in one space it's not really having an impact and so um, what I'm trying to do is, is approach through advisory lessons right now and assemblies and then also um, I'm the head of department for PHE I'm going to be looking through the global context exploration and trying to find sort of ways to um, change our units and then bring those on as examples for the rest of the uh, departments. Um, subtle changes, uh, and mm -hmm. that's what it is, so that, uh, so that people feel comfortable and confident. Yeah. And, yeah. you know... It, it for me to say that I need to I I need to make white people feel comfortable is 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 a little bit difficult. My wife's white as well um, mm -hmm. because for many many years I haven't felt comfortable as a as a person yeah. of color. If you see what I mean, so it's trying to get that across, and I'm sort of thinking, well, all right, I'm going to try and make you feel comfortable in having these conversations now. Um, but I think it's the yeah. right thing to do for me because we, I want everybody on board and our, our uh, leadership team wants everyone on board and we're just trying to sort of navigate those waters to see what is the best way to do this so that we can get people on board. Exactly. I love I love the phrase that we're going to get comfortable being uncomfortable. No, absolutely. Because even looking at um, the learner profile attributes and it's like courage and taking risks and that's being vulnerable. And we're not, we're going to say when we're growing, we're going to say the wrong thing. We're going to, um, you know, we, we just have to be vulnerable if, in it. We have to, yes. So the message for, for white people is that, no, this isn't going to be easy. That, yes, this things will make you mad and uncomfortable. And that's a great place to be. That's where we have to be. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting when there's this perception that where when white people bring a perception that they have to feel comfortable. Or they, um, anyways. Yeah, we'll see how. Hopefully, I mean, it'll be really good to connect with you again. You know, um, in a few months or something like that to see, or in the summer, um, and see where you know our journeys have gone and what progress we've made and what obstacles yeah. we've managed to overcome and difficulties we've sort of you know come across. Yes, definitely. But okay. Thank you so much again. Um, I really appreciate it.